Artificial intelligence gives machines the ability to learn to recognize faces, monitor behaviors, or even emotions, which turns simple surveillance cameras into virtual detectives that can understand and even judge what people do. This technology is used in China to analyze each person's behavior in real time, creating a point system based on criminal, medical, and academic records and, above all, conduct on the internet and social networks. This country was really an example of what Europe wanted to prohibit with the new artificial intelligence regulation, recently approved. Basically, it results in an algorithmic analysis made from the data that is collected through these systems and which, in essence, allow some citizens to travel, to have access to a certain type of goods or some freedom and other citizens to be prevented from having access to any type of special rights, to buy a car, to travel abroad, etc. But this technology can be used by authorities too. For example, find criminals because facial recognition makes it possible to look for anyone with certain characteristics in a crowd. But a misinterpretation can accuse innocent people of serious crimes and, in the wrong hands, could even be used to prepare terrorist attacks based on race or religion. Therefore, it is also prohibited by European law which only provides for its use by authorities and in very specific cases. Equally worrying is the algorithmic discrimination that, for example, in the American criminal system, is the artificial intelligence that decides which of the convicts can benefit from parole. Based on less rigorous data, it is based, essentially, on a set of statistical data regarding previous cases. And this is reflected, deep down, in the idea that, for example, being born or habitually residing in the wrong neighborhood, therefore, having a specific racial origin and having a certain level of education and everything else is an indicator of a greater probability of committing crimes. This, in some way, ends up calling into question the principle of equality itself. But, on the one hand, the rapid evolution of digital tools leads to real attacks on citizens' fundamental rights. It is often people who put themselves in danger when they want to access a service on the web or download an application and sign contracts without reading them, giving away sensitive information to the technological giants who control the possible space. It is the true gold of the 21st century which, unlike the real thing, never runs out. Personal data is in the sights of those who do business on the internet and the more our lives become digital, the more data will be available. We spend most of our time online and leave an impossible to erase trail of acts or information about ourselves. And it is this digital footprint that can pose serious problems to our privacy, identity and security. That's why we need to raise awareness of abuses and know that there are laws that protect our rights in the digital world. When we browse the internet, when we use the phone, when we are on social media, when we pay or use automatic payment systems on motorways. We are being recorded and much of this data is naturally collected lawfully, but there are cases in which, in fact, there are companies and other organizations that collect data without our consent. And this is naturally a violation of either data collection or other European rules. And people must be aware that their data is not processed without their consent. Technology today knows our location, the number of steps we take, our heart rate, the time we spend awake from watching the television and driving, or even what is missing in the fridge. But are we all aware that this data can be used against us? And what is written in the law to protect us?